Hello, everyone. Marcus Howard here, just looking at the levels just to make sure that things are working all right. Seems like we are good there. Uh, let me just get the chat up just so I'm able to see if there are any questions that come up. So we should be ready to go. Welcome to this YouTube live workshop that we're going to be doing on how to secure one million dollars in funded accounts. I am really excited. This is probably one of my favorite subjects to talk about in trading, which is essentially how to risk someone else's money to grow your own wealth. I know when I started, I started with my own money and within about two or three months, quickly lost most, if not all of it, uh, which is never fun. So it's great to be able to have some sort of system, some sort of tool, some sort of strategy and companies that you can work with that will help you to grow your wealth in alternative ways. And so one of the things that I pride myself on here at Tradecology is to give you complete information, even if it's a free workshop like this. Uh, it's not designed for me to keep anything out, for me to hide something behind some premium offer at the end where, you know, you sit on this line for about an hour or an hour and some change, and you feel like you walked away with useful but incomplete information. I do want to give you everything that you will need to secure $1 million in funded accounts on your own without my help. But if there is the possibility that you do want some additional help, you do want um, someone to work with you, someone to be an accountability partner, someone who can do those sorts of things, there will be an opportunity for that, but there is no obligation to do so. Uh, and it's not required to do that in order to get the full value of everything that we're going to be talking about. So without further ado, I am ready to go ahead and jump right in to this presentation. So excited today. All right. So let's talk about what we're going to be covering. First and foremost, we're going to be going into my full $1 million funded account cheat sheet in terms of what are the you know top two or three or five things that you should know in order to be able to get the most out of passing these evaluations to do the to get the most out of getting a funded account and to be able to keep one for the long term because it's not just so much that you get an account it's also important that you keep the account to your first payout and i'm going to actually show you some pretty startling statistics next which shows you why this is so important and also why it's so difficult to do so next we're going to talk about choosing the right funding company there are several a funded account companies out here that offer you 50,000, 100,000, 350,000 of their money to trade with, but there are some nuances between them. So what are some of the best companies that you should choose and why? We'll go into choosing the right instrument. So what are the things that you should trade? Should you be trading the indices? Should you be trading the currencies? Should you be trading the bonds? Should you be trading precious metals or oil or so those sorts of things? So what are the right instruments for you? Of course, it's different for every trader, but when it comes down to being able to pass these evaluations quickly and efficiently, there are instruments that are better than others. So I do want to go into the differences between them and then which ones are the best ones specifically if you're looking to pass an evaluation. I know everyone has their own favorite, whether it's NQ, ES, uh, ZB, which is the bonds. I have my own favorites as well. And those are perfectly fine for you to trade once you have a funded account. But in order to pass these evaluations and get a funded account, there are some simpler and easier ways to be able to get to the finish line. So I want to show you what those are today. We're going to cover choosing the right strategy. So that's where we're going to get into a little bit more of what is what your risk profile should be, a little bit about entries and exits. Of course, we're not going to go, you know, where you should enter, where you should exit specifically, because all trades are done in the past. So there are no, you know, present examples that I can give you in this current thing. But we will do a lot to help you to understand what is the correct strategy that you should use, how you should go about determining the strategy that's going to help you. And I'm going to provide you one that has helped me and countless other traders pass hundreds of these evaluations. It doesn't have, you don't have to throw your head against the wall. You don't have to throw a pasta against the wall to ultimately see what sticks. We've done the work to help you to know what is the best strategy that you should use. So if you just implement that strategy, you should be perfectly fine. Then we'll go into some case studies. So some things that I've done as well as some things that other traders have done as well, which will help you to um, get an understanding of just how possible it is not only for you to pass these evaluations to get a million dollars in funded accounts, but then also hit your income goals. Because it's one thing to have the accounts, but it's another thing to use them to achieve what it is that you're trying to achieve in life, whether it's more financial freedom or time freedom, 
to quit your job, to stress less about bills and things that you have going on. So, you know, we'll show you how you can get to 10, 20, 30, even $50,000 a month if you want to. And the cool part is that it really doesn't require more than being net positive one trade a day. I know so often, especially in this industry, there are traders that don't necessarily know what you need to do in order to be able to get to some of these higher numbers, the 20,000, the $50,000 per month. And so the mistake that they normally make is they just simply put on too much risk. So they'll try and get one of these evaluation accounts. They may even pass one for, let's say, $250,000, $350,000. And they're doing it simply because they want to have the ability to be able to put on more contracts because they believe that more contracts is the thing that's going to help them to get to their goal faster. But what I found is kind of counterintuitive, but that's actually not the case. More contracts or doing more trades or winning more trades is not the thing that you necessarily want to do. Even just going up, and I'll show you in this, in this workshop today, even going up five ticks one time a day is enough to get you as much money as you're looking to make or as much money as you need. $10,000 a month for sure, but definitely more. And I'll show you how we tier that and how we work with that. So if that's something that's interesting to you, uh, you're going to be really excited about what we are presenting today in this workshop. And then in the end, if we have some time, because I only want this to go about an hour, an hour and 10 minutes or so, don't want this to last into the hour and a half, two hour range, then we'll go into Q&A. All right. So yes, this presentation will be recorded. We are streaming it right now on YouTube, so it will be recorded. I'm recording it on my personal machine as well. So there will be a backup just in case YouTube you know, messes up or flummoxes and doesn't ultimately be able to record it. But there will be a recording available and I will send it out to everyone, if not tonight, definitely by tomorrow morning so that you can review the information that's in here if you want to use it later or if you know, you didn't have a chance to be able to view it live because you're at work and this is the middle of the afternoon. I absolutely understand. You'll be able to view it then. All right. So before we dive into the details, just want to go into the risk disclosure as, you know, we have to take the time if you need to, to read the whole thing. But just, you know, just understand that here at MLH Capital, which is the parent company of Trade Ecology, uh, none of us are officers. I mean, none of us are financial advisors or broker dealers. OK, so none of this that we're saying here is to be considered financial advice or investment recommendations. Uh, we won't even be talking truly about specific trades in this anyway, just because I have restrictions against being able to do that with the fact that I run a hedge fund. So um, nothing contained in this communication con constitutes the solicitation, recommendation, promotion, endorsement, or offer of any particular security, transaction, or investment. Understand that securities uh, carry risks. So everything I'm talking about here is an example. You can lose some or all of your money, okay? when you are investing. And no part of this presentation may be copy, recorded, or rebroadcast in any form without the prior written consent of MLH Capital. All right, so now that we got that risk disclosure out of the way, we're just basically saying, don't just blindly copy what's happening here. Use this as inspiration to be able to use your own brain, okay? And that will ultimately make sense. So a little bit about me. Who am I? Who is this person that you're listening to in this, in this presentation today in this workshop? So I'm Marcus. I am an investor, an author, and founder of Trade Ecology. So Tradecology is a coaching company that works with traders to help them to optimize their trading psychology, optimize their trading system, and ultimately to go and become consistently profitable. So we specialize in the psychology part. We think and we feel and we have the data that shows that it's not about entries and exits when it comes to trading that makes the biggest difference. It's 100% what's in between your two ears. It's 100% your psychology that makes the difference. And we have worked both in my own private practice, as well as in, um, you know, several small businesses, some fortune 100 or so companies, I guess is what you call them. Some of the bigger name companies um, that we've worked with to help people on their executive teams to use this sort of information to uh, use some psych psychological tools to become the optimal person that they can be. And we've applied some of these things that we have learned from doing that to individual traders who are looking to increase their income, increase their consistency, increase their uh, bottom line as traders. And so what we do here at Trade Ecology is to work with you specifically on things like overtrading, analysis paralysis, revenge trading, uh, inconsistent profitability overall. So many different things that come up. We have tools that will help you to be able to remedy them. 
Uh, but on top of that, in terms of running Tricology, which is, um, I would say, about maybe 20 percent of what I do, I'm also a partner at MLH Capital, which is a um, which is at this point is graduated to a hedge fund. So, you know, I trade both for myself and others full time. This isn't something where, you know, all I do is coach. Um, coaching is maybe about 10 to 15 percent of what I do. 85% of what I do and 99.999% of my money is made on the chart. So I do this every single day. I do this for a living uh, and I do this at some of the highest levels. So um, if nothing else, the information I'm giving you has been tested. It's been used in the trenches. It's been used for myself and others. And I'm not trying to give you anything that I don't use myself or that isn't true especially in a public forum like this, okay? I'm not here to BS anybody. I'm here to give you the best information that I can because ultimately I want traders to succeed. This isn't one thing where if I win, you lose. That's not how trading works. Uh, we can all win in this game. And so I wanna be able to provide the knowledge, the tools and the opportunities for you to be able to do so. So let me talk a little bit about how I got consistent because I know that's an important part of the story. So I started trading in January of 2017 and I started with about $25,000 uh, of a paper money account on uh, an exchange called Nadex. So Nadex is uh, the North American and North American Derivatives Exchange. It's actually about five or six blocks away from where I live here in downtown Chicago. And they were they are a binary options exchange. And that's a simplified version of options where basically, you know, if you believe the S&P 500 is going to go up today, you're going to buy a contract at $50 with the hope of making $50. If you think it's going to go down, then you're going to sell a contract at $50 with the hope of making $50. So um, if you are familiar, if you're a student of trading, the best thing that I can describe Nadex as is like a bucket shop, if you know what those things are. So it's not necessarily you are trading in the market itself but you're making predictions on what the market will do next on another exchange altogether but that was my that was a great introduction at least for me into how trading how futures and those sorts of things worked and in 18 months i grew that twenty five thousand dollar paper account to over 13 million so it was when i got to that well a little bit past like a million maybe two million i was like okay well maybe i can i can really try to do this so i took my own money put it into the account and i've been off to the races ever since. I mean, from that time in 2017 to now in 2022, so in about five years to go from basically zero to hedge fund uh, has been a pretty interesting and fun journey. And as much as I can, I wanna be able to share some of those tools and insights and takeaways with you in this presentation today. All right, I also help, and this is more with the tradeology side of things. I help enjoy, uh, I enjoy helping traders discover and overcome the number one obstacle that's keeping them from consistent profitability uh, and helping them to multiply their returns. And that's all that this presentation is gonna be about from now until uh, we finish. So let's dive right in to what it is that we're doing. Okay, and this, I guess the last thing, my challenge course is to help traders transform the trading psychology, and it's all based on Nobel Prize winning research. Now, this part is important because I don't want you to think that the information that I'm giving you today or the tools that I will be providing uh, are things that I just made up on my own. What I would say is my superpower, my claim to fame, is understanding how the work and the tools of the shoulders of giants and how other people have utilized them. I, I, I'm able to identify how that would work for me and how that would work for others. So I'll take things that may not necessarily have been designed for, let's say, our industry of trading, but work incredibly well in other industries, right? And apply it to trading so that you can utilize and use them to exponentially increase whatever it is that you're trying to do. So a lot of what we do here at Tradecology is actually license award-winning technology at a deep discount so that they are available to you. Not necessarily that we just internally develop all of these tools, because if we spent time developing all of these tools on our own, we wouldn't have as many tools as we do. And we've got plenty of tools that will ultimately help you. So we love this model so much better. All right. So just quickly, this is, you know, my book that I did. It was actually on a PIX11 interview, which I go back. Uh, PIX11 New York. I was on that new show a couple of months ago talking about maximizing your money. Uh, and they were actually pretty cool to shout out my book, which I thought was really nice. Um, all right. So enough about me. Let's jump into who this presentation is going to help most today. This will help you if you struggle with passing evaluations. This will also help you if you struggle with keeping funded accounts, because it's not just getting the account. It's also keeping the account, because as I will show you next, there are so many traders that pass these evaluations or pass the first phase of the evaluation that can't ever get to passing the second phase or keeping the accounts long enough for them to be able to um, 
how am I trying to say it? For them to be able to make money at the end of the day. And so what I want to be able to show you is how you can utilize all of this information to get and keep a funded account to your first payout so that you actually have some return on investment of everything that you're trying to do. Signing up for these tools, getting these indicators, signing up for these evaluations, paying all these data fees, all of this stuff costs money. Okay. So we treat this like a business. And so I don't want to just say, hey, pass this evaluation, but I want to say, okay, pass this evaluation and let's use the strategy that we have developed to pass the evaluation to continue past the evaluation phase to actually get you some money, to actually put some money back into your bank account uh, and to actually get some fruits of your labor, which is, I believe, where everyone truly wants to be. Okay, this will also help you if you struggle with establishing or sticking to A plus trading setups. So the big piece of the puzzle is discipline. How can we get you disciplined to not only be able to know how to identify what your A plus setups are, but even actually stick to them while you're trading? Because the biggest issue with, with trading is not that you don't know what to do. In most cases, you know what to do. And if you don't know what to do, then I can work with you to be able to do that. But the hardest part is sticking to what you're supposed to do. And that's why I'm telling you psychology is key. And that's why we focus on the psychology part more than anything else, because it is the psychology piece of it that makes the difference. If you don't get your psychology and your emotions in check, there's no amount of work that you're going to be able to do that is going to actually help you to be consistently profitable. I'll give you an example. I'll give you a story. When I first started getting into futures, so I did binary options first, but then I jumped into traditional futures. When I started working on traditional futures, I was a part of a trade group and there was maybe about maybe 30, 40,000 traders that were in this trade group. It was a pretty big group. And in that group, the trade leader would give us the charts. So customized charts. Uh, there was an, there was like a semi-automated trader that was set up. Uh, he gave you entries. He gave you exits. He even lets you follow along with everything that he was doing in his trade room. It was about as plug and play, as hand holding as you can get. And even with all that hand holding, I saw that in that trade group, there were some traders that were making a million dollars a year and there were other traders who were losing their life savings. Now, how is that possible when we all have the same information? OK, we're all seeing the same charts. We're all seeing the entries and exits. We all have the same stuff. So what's the big disparity between the performance? And I'm telling you, it's not just the entries and exits. OK, it's not the system per se, as much as it is the psychology. So if we don't have that piece in order, all of this will be for naught. So we're going to focus a lot on the psychology aspect of trading because that's the thing that really makes the biggest difference. I assure you, ignore it at your peril. All right. So this will also help you if you struggle with discipline, over trading and other trading issues. We're going to dive into all of this, how to how to overcome it, how to remedy it, um, how to simplify the trading process even more so that you can do this on a consistent level, even if you have a full-time job. This isn't about necessarily you quitting your job and just going all in with this. You can quit your job if you choose to, once you start making the 10, 20, $30,000 a month. But all of this doesn't require you to actually quit your job to focus in on this. And I'll show you exactly how we can do that. All right. So even if you feel some of these don't apply to you, that's okay. Stick around during this workshop because I promise you there are going to be so many golden nuggets that you can take away from this. Again, I work really hard to make sure that there is as much value as I can put in these presentations. And so this isn't, you know, just a, just filled with fluff or filler. Like I'm, I'm not interested in that. I hate those sorts of presentations and, uh, in terms of watching them and I definitely don't want to do them myself. All right. So let's jump into some perspective on getting funded. I like to call these the startling statistics or the, oh my God, I can't believe these moments. Okay. So I got to give credit where credit is due. This is, um, this, these stats I got from my buddy, Austin Silver, who is at AS, ASFX.biz. Uh, he is a brilliant, brilliant, um, Forex trader. So if you are interested in Forex or if you trade Forex, I would definitely recommend you go check out his stuff. Uh, he's one of the folks that definitely knows what he's talking about. Uh, and does it in a public forum, which I think is actually pretty cool. So uh, he got these numbers from uh, one of the, what do you call them? The funded trading accounts that he was working with. And so this isn't the full spectrum of the industry, but of the other companies that I've spoken with, their numbers are pretty similar as well. Okay. So uh, look at this as just a month's worth of data from one company, but then multiply that by the 10, 12, or however many 15 companies that exist out here that are all doing the same sort of thing. So in this month, 
there were 5,718 new accounts set up. So this is new traders that are taking evaluations. Okay, this may have been the first evaluation, the second evaluation, not really sure, but these are people who don't currently have funded trading accounts that are now taking this evaluation. Of these 5,718 people, only 10% of them passed phase one. So right out the gate, 5,718 traders, only 572 of them got to the point where they could make whatever it is. So let's say in this in this instance, they you know make three thousand dollars without losing twenty five hundred of it. Okay, so only ten percent passed phase one. Now to get to the point where you actually got the funded account with this company, you have to do this a second time. So you actually you have to get to phase two, right? So you have to pass phase two. And of those 572 people, only 24% of them actually got to the second phase and passed it. So of that initial 5,718 traders, 137 of them actually got to the point where they had a funded account. What a huge drop off there is. But now you got to ask yourself, okay, of those even 137 people who went from zero to funded account, how many of them were able to actually keep their funded account until their first payout? Just four. Of those 137 people, only 3% of them actually got to the point where they got their first payout. So 5,718 people that have started this process, <clears throat> only four of them ever made money. That's 0.007%. That's less than one hundredth. Actually, tenth, hundredth, sorry. That's seven one thousandths of 1%, not 7%, not 7 tenths of a percent, 7 one thousandths of a percent. That is a startling number. Getting and keeping a funded account is hard on purpose, okay? They make these, they make these tests difficult to pass because they only want to work with the traders that have a proven track record. So if you go into these situations, if you go into these evaluations and you're guessing, and you don't have a solid strategy and you don't have the discipline, you may get successful. You may even get lucky one or two times. But to be able to hold and sustain that over the long term, it almost never happens. Okay. And they built businesses, entire business models around you failing these evaluations. So now that we know even some real numbers in terms of how many people get paid and knowing that this is hard on purpose, let's show you how you can actually make it a little easier. Okay. This doesn't have to be a complicated process, it's actually relatively simple. But sticking to the plan is the hard part. And so I want to give you the tools to be able to actually stick to the plan that has been proven to pass these evaluations. So that's what we're going to jump into now. Here is the uh, million dollar funded account cheat sheet. So for me, this is what are the, if I just had four or five things that I knew that could really help me outside of just where to enter and where to exit, right? Which not everybody at this point I know comes to these sorts of workshops for just tell me where to enter and where to exit because you realize it's deeper than that. Uh, but what are the four or five things that I wish I would have like really focused on when I started this so that I didn't waste so much money passing, well, taking all these evaluations and not passing it. So the number one thing when it comes to funded trading accounts is you have to understand it's not about how much money you make, but it's more about how much money you lose per trade. Most of these companies have something called a trailing drawdown, meaning that it doesn't matter how much money you end with, it only matters how much money you've necessarily made. So let me give you an example. Let's say we're doing a $50,000 evaluation and you have a trailing drawdown of 2,500, okay? So you're into a trade, you're into your first trade, you've got two contracts going, and during the trade, you go up about $500. So when you're in that trade, you're up about $500, but then something happens. You look away, you check an email, but you had your stop loss together. It was moved to break even. So now, boom, you get stopped out of break even. So you didn't technically lose money on the trade minus the fees, which were about $5, right? So you would have lost $10 with two contracts. Now, with the trailing drawdown, what ends up happening, though, is because you actually went up $500 in unrealized profit, meaning you didn't take it, but you went up that much, your trailing drawdown has now moved up $500. So now in the next trade, you can't, you have less money that you can actually lose. It's not 2,500, it's now 2,000 because you went up $500. This is incredibly important for you to know and understand. And this is why so many traders lose their evaluation because they're not really keeping track of the trailing drawdown versus how much money they're actually making. 
So it's easy, okay, for you to make money. I don't want to use the word easy because then you're going to think that like I'm, I'm trying to say trading is too simple. But like there is a process of being able to make money, but it's really the risk management and how much money you lose. That's the thing that we need to manage first and foremost in order to be able to be consistent in the long run. Because if you can make a series of medium wins, but keep your losses small, I promise you, you will have more money than you will ever need in life, in life. I say this again, in life. But if you do what 90% of other traders that are doing that aren't passing these evaluations, actually 99.9993, okay, percent of people that are taking these evaluations, you're typically risking more than you'll ever be able to make. And that's always going to be a losing strategy. So I want to show you how to reverse this for you to make more than you will ever lose, or at the very least be 50-50 or, you know, a one-to-one -one ratio. So if you make 100, you lose 100 so that you're never putting yourself in a position where you're getting yourself in a lot of trouble. The aim is to multiply your earnings while diversifying your losses. And I'll go into this in much more detail, but this is just in the cheat sheet. But the idea is that when you're trading, you want to have multiple accounts where if you go up on every account, you're multiplying how much money you're making. But then let's say if you lose in that account. So let's say you have, for example, 10 trading accounts, right? And you go up $200 on each one of those trading accounts. Well, now you're up a total of $2,000. But when it comes down to your loss limit, if you were to have those same 10 accounts and now you lose $200, you actually just lose $200 across 10 accounts. And so you can hold on to that account longer because you're spreading the losses across multiple accounts and you never run into this drawdown limit. And that's the biggest thing that we have to guard against in these funded trading accounts is the drawdown limit. It's nothing else. If you can just make sure to mitigate and manage that drawdown limit, you'll be fine. So that's what we're going to focus on here. Again, the aim is to multiply your earnings while diversifying your losses. Next, multiple funded accounts is better than one large funded account. Usually, typically, a lot of traders will go the route of, okay, I want to have access to more contracts. So therefore, let me get one of these larger funded accounts. Let me get one for 250 or 350,000 or 500,000. And you get those accounts and you get access to all of those contracts, 15, 20, even 30 contracts available to you to trade at any one time. But your drawdown limit isn't in proportion to how many contracts that you have. So in those situations, if you're trading the max number of contracts, you could stand to lose just one, maybe even two trades and you've blown up your account. And so the trap is that, yes, you have access to all of these contracts. But when you lose trading that many contracts, you quickly blow up the account. You have to start again. You have to take this evaluation again, which was expensive to begin with. You know, if you're talking 350,000, 500,000, it's multiple hundreds of dollars. And so sometimes... And I've talked to several traders that, you know, have spent $2,000, $3,000, $5,000 on evaluations and have passed some of these, but they've never gotten to the point where they can use their, they can use the accounts to actually make money with them. So what I found is the better way to do it and the cheaper way to do it, believe it or not, at the end of the day is to get multiple of these funded accounts. So to have two, three, five, in our program, we suggest 10 of these funded accounts so that we can spread the losses across multiple multiple accounts. So if you ever do take a loss in an account, which is inevitable, right? There's no 100% win rate in trading if there is someone's lying to you, okay? So when you do take losses, that the losses are small and they're distributed as opposed to they are large and in one account, which leads you to blow everything up. So multiple funded accounts is better than one large funded account. The most popular instruments also aren't always the most profitable. This is the hugest one I wish I would have learned in the beginning, because when you're on YouTube, when you're on Facebook, when you're looking online, everybody's talking to you about in the futures market, in Q, ES, you may get the bond sometimes where people are talking about ZB. Okay. But those are three instruments of, if you look at, how many instruments are available to you to be able to take these evaluations? There are dozens of instruments available to you. It's not just the big three or the big two that everybody pays attention to. I'll give you an example. In my own life, I made my first $150,000 trading RTY. That's the Russell 2000. That's the top 2,000 small businesses in the country. Um, it wasn't, you know, NQ. It wasn't the Dow. It wasn't gold. It wasn't crude oil. It was something as obscure as um as RTY. And then now I've moved from, I also trade RTY, I mean, almost every day, but I've looked at some other instruments too that are 
uh, less popular, but are easier to trade at the end of the day. For example, uh, trading UB versus ZB or trading silver. OK, uh, silver is probably one of my favorites because the cool thing about silver and it doesn't sound cool when you say it, but when you look at it, it is true. Uh, JP Morgan, the bank has pretty much cornered the silver market. They don't have 100 percent of it, but they have, I think, 80 percent or more of the entire silver market. So therefore, there aren't a lot of players that are in the futures market trying to manipulate and dictate the price because it's pretty much managed by one bank. So when it comes to trading futures on silver, the prices are the price movement, the price action, uh, the trends are actually fairly predictable to see because there aren't a lot of players that are trying to manipulate the price going back and forth. So some of the least popular instruments or lesser popular instruments may have the liquidity that you need to be able to make some of the easier plays. But when you go like to the NQs and the ESs of the world, where there are thousands of people trying to manipulate or thousands of traders trying to manipulate the price all at once, uh, it becomes extremely difficult, okay, for you to figure out actually what's going to happen next. So I wish I would have knew in the beginning that don't just go with the popular instruments. Find one that is easier to predict the movement. And that's usually some of the least or lesser popular instruments. And I'll give you some several examples as we go through this presentation. Finally, being disciplined is paramount, meaning uh, being net positive, even one winning trade per day is all you need. I promise you, I will show you the examples. I will show you the spreadsheets. I will break it all down. You don't need to win 10 trades a day. You don't need to have 10, 15, 20 contracts going on one account to be able to make the money that you need. Just going up one trade a day is all you will need to get all the money you will ever need to achieve a lot of the things in life. But the whole part about it is being disciplined about that part of it. When you get into over trading, when you're getting to doing other things that are outside of this, especially when we're talking about passing the evaluations and getting these funded accounts, then you typically find that you run into trouble that you don't necessarily need to do. I promise you. So uh, let's jump into a little bit more in, in terms of how all of this works. So we're going to get into the meat of this presentation now. So the first part of it is going to be choosing the right company. There are so many funded account companies out here. These are just four of I mean, maybe 10 or 15. I've tested pretty much all of them. I like some, definitely don't like others. Uh, but there are some things for sure that you need to look out for or to, to make decisions on when you're deciding to choose which company you want to go with. So the first thing is, and this is for me is the most important, is what is the drawdown for these funded accounts? So is it an end of day drawdown, which is EOD? Or is it a trailing drawdown? I've already gone into what a trailing drawdown is, meaning it's not about your realized profit. It's about your unrealized profit. So if you go up $500, your trailing drawdown has moved up $500, whether or not you even close a trade positive $500. So so many traders run into trouble because they aren't keeping track of their trailing drawdown and they have a lot less to lose. And then they end up blowing their accounts as opposed to an end of day drawdown or also known as a pro drawdown, meaning that let's say you go up $500, but then you end up for whatever reason, exiting the trade at break even. Well, now your drawdown is still at the remaining original amount. So if it was 2,500, you went up 500, you went out of break even, you're still at $2,500. Okay. That doesn't change. So if you're talking about, if you're someone who um, has maybe issues with discipline, has, uh, you know, things where you really don't have everything tightened just yet, it would make more sense for you to work with a company that has an end of day drawdown versus necessarily having a trailing drawdown because a trailing drawdown, a lot of instances is a little harder for you to pass on the evaluation side. So understanding what some of those are. I know, for example, end of day drawdown is you profit, I believe to some degree top step, but don't have not used top step in almost two years. So don't quote me on that, but I believe that they did have uh, and end of day drawdown, there's other companies that have them as well. So look into that. Okay. Is it, do you, do you want to use a company that has a trailing drawdown, which is harder or an end of day drawdown, which is uh, easier ultimately to pass at the end of the day. Another thing you want to look at is trading or account restrictions, meaning during the trading day, are there rules that restrict you from being able to trade at certain times of day? For example, this is one of the reasons why I signed up for a top step account and quickly lost my top step account and never used it again was because top step had a rule and I don't know if they still have it, but they had one at the time where you can't trade within five minutes of news. Okay. And there are times when I wasn't always aware of what the major news events was. I was just in a trade. So the news had nothing to do with the trade that I was in, 
But because I was in a trade, not I started a trade, I was literally in a trade during the time and I traded into news that they restricted my account and they closed it. So you have to look at what are some of the different account restrictions that some of these have, because if you aren't aware of them, you can be making all this progress. You can be working for, um, you know, weeks on weeks on end to be able to pass some of these evaluations and then you lose it for um, for no reason whatsoever. So I'm getting in the chat that says Bullinox has an end of day drawdown, which I believe they definitely do. Um, another company is called Tick Tick Trader. They also have an end of day drawdown. So there are several that are out there, but I know, you know, Lilu, Apex, um, they definitely have trailing drawdowns. So just understanding the difference between the two and why you should use them, okay? Another one is the cost to take evaluation. So in the futures market, this isn't as big of a thing because they all are kind of competitively priced. Some are a little bit more expensive than others, but for the most part, they're all in a similar range because they're all competing with each other. And so that's bringing the price down of all of them. But there are some, you know, Forex evaluations that I've seen that are thousands of dollars, you know? So you have to take some of these things into consideration, meaning how much you're looking to invest uh, in order to be able to even take some of these evaluations because some of them can be relatively expensive and again with the method that we're using we need you to we want you to have multiple evaluations or take multiple uh have multiple funded accounts so we need to be able to have a way for you to be able to uh, get into and pass these things relatively quickly uh, there's another one which is concurrent account limit so how many accounts can you have at once so can you just have one account in the top uh, step case can you have just two or three in the case of you profit unless you email them and beg and plead for them to give you more? Or can you go the Lilu, the Apex, the Tick Tick, the Bullinox, where you can have 10 or 20 of them? Um, you know, you just you have to know these sorts of things because we had several traders, at least in my last cohort, that were passing, you know, you profit accounts or were taking multiple you profit evaluations at once and passed like four or five only to be told that they can have two. So they were able to sign up and pass five evaluations, but only be able to utilize two of them. So looking at the fine print of these sorts of companies to know how this works, um, how this works is, is going to be important for you to go and understand. And I do see that there are some questions that are that are coming in the chat, and I'm happy to answer them uh, in the Q&A space. It's just a lot of material that I want to be able to cover. Um, another thing is the withdrawal restrictions. So how soon can you get access to your money? Uh, some you have to wait as as long as 30 trading days, which is a month and a half of actual time if you're trading every single day. Or can you get access to your money immediately, but with um, you know less money available to you? So uh, the example I want to give is you profit. You profit on day one or in the first week. Once you pass your evaluation, if you make profit, you can withdraw that profit. But since you're within a window of, I think it's less than 30 trading days, the split that you have is 50-50 versus, let's say, 80-20 or 90-10. But if you go with the Lilo or an Apex, you'll get the, you know, 80-20, 90-10 or 100% of your first, you know, five or 10,000. But you have to wait the full 30 trading days. And I assure you, 30 trading days is a long time to wait to get access to your money. I've had several traders, and this has even happened to me, where I've gone 27, 28, 29 trading days in the profit only to have something at the end in the last one or two days, blow up the entire account, and that's two and a half months. That's not just a month and a half of waiting, but the month it took me to pass the evaluation. So that's two and a half months down the drain of work that I've done, and I have nothing to show for it because I have to start all over again. So just understanding what the rules are are important. And there are some recommendations that would give in terms of some of the easiest ones. So you profit is one of the easier ones. Again, you get access to your money relatively quickly as soon as you pass it. Tick, tick Trader is another one that as soon as you pass your evaluations within like the first week, you can't get access to the funds again at a 50-50 split. Um, but 50% of something is better than 100% of nothing. Uh, so you can use some of these other ones to be able to get access to your money faster as opposed to having to wait a month and a half. Um, and those things are, it's really tricky. It's really, really tricky. So just want to be able to give you some insights on that as you're going forward. Uh, also, is there a monthly versus a flat funding fee? Meaning, um, you know, once you pass the evaluations, are you doing it monthly? So are you paying monthly for the data or is it just one data charge? And then you don't have to pay anymore for the data unless you get another account. Uh, these costs add up. So it's important for you to know what these are and read the fine print before you get into them. And then what instruments are available? Because not all companies run the same instruments. Of course, they're all going to have the main ones, but there are other instruments that 
you can easily be profitable in that one company may have that another one doesn't. An example is like Bitcoin futures. So uh, Lilu has Bitcoin futures. I'm trying to think there's one or two others, but not everybody carries Bitcoin futures in terms of uh, an instrument that you can ultimately be able to trade. But it's one of the simpler instruments that you can use if you also want to make money. And I believe it's like $25 or $30 a tick, which is also great uh, because the higher tick value that you get, the better it's going to be. All right, so moving right along, let's talk about now, instead of choosing the right companies, what are we going to do about choosing the right instruments, okay? So we have to take tick values in consideration. I'm not going to go too deep into this because that's going to be what the entire next slide is about. But you have to understand, hey, how much money can I make per tick? And how is that going to influence how much, how much I have to, like how far the market has to move or how much I can make per individual trade before I can actually pass some of these evaluations? You also have to consider the volatility. So does the market even move enough during the day for me to be able to make the money that I need to make? Not all uh, instruments move a lot. For example, if we're talking the bonds, you know, ZB is amazing, but ZB also doesn't move a whole bunch during the day. And, and it usually only has one or two major moves a day. And if you miss those major moves, then you essentially the whole day is a wash. So looking at the volatility of different instruments to figure out which one is the most important, uh, you have to look at liquidity considerations as well, meaning that can you actually get into these trades at the number of contracts that you're going to need to be able to make money consistently? The famous example I love to give is Palladium. Palladium is great at $50 per tick, okay? But the issue with Palladium is that there's not a lot of liquidity in the market because not a lot of players are in the liquidity, I mean, are in the Palladium space. And so you'll find that the price is going to jump around, you know, 10, 5, 10, 7, 8 ticks in either direction to be able to fill the orders that are there. And it's not the same sort of fluid movement that you may get with an NQ or an ES. So yes, $50 per tick is amazing, but if you can't get out at your take profit, you're in trouble, those sorts of things. So it's it's really important for you to know and be able to understand um, these things. The other thing is you wanna have saturation considerations, meaning how many players are playing in, a, in an individual market at any given point in time. So if we're talking ES, NQ, gold, crude oil, you know, there are hundreds, sometimes thousands of traders all influencing the price at, influencing the price at once. So if you've got a technical thing that you're seeing or a support and resistance line that you're seeing there, and you're like, well, it's supposed to bounce off of this or it's supposed to reject this and it doesn't, it's because not everybody is playing with the same rules that you are. So if you've got more people that are influencing the price, that it may be a little less predictable than you actually think it's gonna be. So that's important. Another one is evaluation considerations, meaning, okay, what instruments are even available to you with the company that you're choosing when you are taking this evaluation? So again, I said take value considerations is the next thing I want to get into. So now let's talk about the instrument tier list, okay? So I got this information from a company. I will not say their name, although I have interviewed several companies like these, but there are companies that exist that will, um, in a more shady way, pass these evaluations for you. Uh, I was interested in their method in terms of what they were actually trading, not so much in utilizing their services because one, a hundred percent of these um, funded account companies say that you have to pass these evaluations on your own. So I am not recommending you go with one of these companies, but I did interview them because I want to see how they were passing these evaluations from multiple people at a professional level. Like what were they doing that was different from everyone else? And this was probably one of the more revealing things that they revealed to me is that they actually have a tier list in terms of what instruments they are choosing and how they go about choosing the correct instruments that they want to use to be able to pass these evaluations at scale. So they have what they call tier one, tier two, and tier three. Tier one is where they exclusively spend their time for passing evaluations. And when I mean exclusively, they say that they only focus on these. They may focus sometimes if they have a client that's being very specific on ES, which is tier two, but in almost every other case, they're focusing on tier one instruments, which are they give you a tick value of anywhere between $25 to $50 per tick, okay? And so these are Bitcoin futures, these are bonds, these are precious metals like um, silver. Uh, there's actually there's two silver futures that do this, um, but there are other instruments that they are using uh, that give them this higher tick range because they can make more money with less movement in the market than trying to, let's say, go with an ES, which is you know, twelve fifty per tick or trying to do crude oil or gold or something like that, which gives you almost half as much as their tier one instruments. And then if you want to go down into tier three, 
which is equities, it's also, it's a lot less than that. So you're talking anywhere, if you're doing equities, it's $5 per tick. If you're doing currencies, it's $6.25 per tick. It's gonna take a lot more movement and a lot more contracts to make the same amount of money to just specifically focus in on tier one. And because these folks have to do this for so many different traders at scale, they were saying that the simplest, easiest, and more predictable way to be able to pass these evaluations is to focus exclusively on these tier one instruments. So the recommendation that I give the folks is the same recommendation I got from them, which I have proven in my own life to be very profitable indeed, uh, is to just focus, especially if we're talking about passing these evaluations on tier one instruments. So that's silver futures, that's most of the bonds, and that's some of the precious metals. And we'll go into examples uh, as we move into the example portion of this, but moving right along because we're already at 45 minutes. So um, let's go into choosing the right evaluation strategy, okay? So the first thing that you need to do when you're choosing the correct strategy that you want to use. So how are we actually going to pass these evaluations? How are we going to be able to get multiple of these, right? The first thing you want to do is establish a budget. Next, you want to establish a formula or the formula that you're going to use that is going to help you to not only pass one of these, but to be able to pass multiple evaluations, sometimes multiple evaluations at once, right? Uh, and the way to do that, if you want to pass multiple evaluations at once, is simply just to get a trade copier. So they're available for like 100, maybe 150 bucks is the most I've probably ever seen one that was worth anything. Uh, but you can use these to sign up for three, four, five, ten, however many. Um, I think the limit for most of them is like 10. So, you know, sign up for 10 evaluations at once if you want to and be able to pass five or 10 at a time. Uh, again, you want to make sure that in the strategy or in the uh, strategy you're developing that you really only want to focus on tier one instruments because that's going to give you the biggest bang for your buck and help you to pass these things in the shortest amount of time. And you want to focus on your A plus setups. If you don't have an A plus setup, if you don't know what they are, um, it would behoove you to either figure that out on your own or work with someone that has success in the market who can help you to be able to determine them. I'm not saying go find somebody and just copy what they're doing, right? Because just to simply copy a trader in most cases will get you into a lot of trouble because their risk profile is different than everything else. But the way that they choose their setups can easily be taught to anyone. So if you don't have your own, it's imperative that you work with someone or, or have a company that you can work with that can help you to be able to develop them. Because without it, you're always gonna be in trouble. Because if you don't know what your A-plus setups are, any setup will do, right? And any setup can't do when we're talking about being able to consistently be profitable. All right, so what goes into an actual optimal strategy? Not just a, any old strategy, but an optimal evaluation strategy that can keep you for the long run. So I'll say this, if you get nothing else from this presentation, maybe even just taking a screenshot of this slide will help you so much more, will get you so much further if you just use this as a part of your risk profile than doing anything else, I assure you. This is probably one of the most important slides in this entire presentation, which is why I want to preface that before I start, okay? So if you kind of tune it out, if you're on Facebook or whatever else is you're doing, it's time for you to lock back in because this is an important piece here. So the big thing that you want to do is you want to think in terms of net positive trades versus profit goal. So what do I mean by that? 80% of the time when I'm talking to a trader that I've just met, and we're talking about, oh, okay, well, what are your goals as a trader? You know, what is it that you're trying to do? Almost exclusively, they'll say, I'm trying to make between $500 and $1,000 a day. Never fails. To me, that's a profit goal. That's saying that you have XYZ amount of money that you are looking to extract from the market, no matter what, on a daily basis in order to be able to help you to hit your trading goals. The caution that I have with that is, one, no one wins money every day. No trader wins money every day. Um, so if you have a daily profit goal, you're already putting yourself behind the eight ball because what happens when you lose that first trade on the day? Now you're scrambling and over trading and doing different things to get you back to the point where, oh, I need to make X, Y, Z dollars per day. It instantly puts you in a space of, I need to use my willpower and skills to make a square peg fit into a round hole. It almost never happens. Instead, what I like to focus on more is net positive trades, meaning and let's say I take three trades today. If I, if I, let's say if I won two and I lost one, I'm still net positive one trade on that day. Meaning let's say if each trade, the value was $100, I went up $200, but then I lost one trade for $100. So I'm still up $100 on the day. I'm still net positive one trade per day. 
I'm telling you, just going up net positive one trade per day will hit any income goal that you have. And I'll prove it to you next, but any income goal that you have. So instead of thinking, okay, this is how much money I need to make every single day, because you almost never will make money every day. If you just think in terms of how many net positive trades do I need to have per month, right? So how many trades do I need to be up in order to be able to hit my income goal? That's a much simpler and much more realistic way to look at consistent profitability than just trying to make money on a daily basis. Next, use a stop loss and a take profit. Believe it or not, 60% of traders never use a stop loss, meaning that they are, they are at the whims of their own tactical implementation, their own execution on whether or not they're going to get out of a trade. That, that almost never works because once your emotions get the better of you, you getting out of a trade almost never happens. The best thinking you're always going to do is before you enter into a trade. It's not going to be once you're into a trade. So if you don't have these sorts of automated things in place to get you out of a trade, when it's clear that it's going against you, you're always going to find that you're in trouble. So definitely use a, a take profit and a stop loss. You want to have a one-to-one -one risk reward per trade minimum, meaning that if your stop loss is going to be $100, you should at the very least have your take profit be $100 too. Now I'm talking about evaluations. You may change that, you know, if you choose to, when you actually have your funded account, I don't suggest that you should, but you could change that. But when we're talking about passing evaluations specifically, it does not make sense for you to lose more money than you ever choose to make in the first place. I would much rather you flip that around but at the very least, be at a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio. So for every $100 you make, you're risking $100. That's so important, and it will keep you in the game for the long term. This is a huge one. Please, please, please don't risk more than 5 or 10% available your, of your available drawdown on any given trade. So if we're doing, let's say, the classic example of a $50,000 account where your, your drawdown limit is $2,500, at the most, you should be risking on any individual trade is $250. So if you're, you know, if you have on too many contracts where you're risking 500, 1,000 or whatever the case is per trade, that's just, it's way too much because it only takes one or two mistakes for you to essentially blow up that account. Whether it's you go past your daily loss limit, which is gonna stop the account, or you just hit your drawdown limit in general, which is still a big problem. But if you're putting yourself where you're only gonna lose 10% of what's there, you can lose, you know, 10 times before you ever blow up your account. Or if you're doing 5%, you can only lose, I mean, you can lose 20 times before you ever blow up this account. The thing is, you always want to put yourself in a position to be able to trade again tomorrow. Okay. So if you're putting on too much risk at any given point, you won't have the opportunity to be able to trade again, unless you're paying money to take another evaluation. And that's not the goal here, right? We want to be able to pass these evaluations the first time. We want to be in the market for less than four hours per day. You, you there are the number of decisions that you make, whether or not you even get into a trade, you you would be surprised, right? There have been so many studies that have shown that traders in an hour sometimes make the three, four, like two to three to 400 different decisions, even if they're choosing not to enter into a trade. Should I get in here? What should I do this next? All these the small decisions that we're making lead to something called decision fatigue. So if you're at the charts more than three or four or five hours, that decision fatigue gets so high that you just, you can't, you physically can't see the best opportunities anymore because you've been there for so long. So it's really important for you to be able to take a break and understand that uh, being in the market more than four hours a day is usually going to lead to more trouble than it's worth. And this is specifically for uh, evaluations, okay? Again, this is not for if you actually have a funded account before evaluations I'm talking about. Do not trail. I do not have enough time to actually show you the data, but I've done this as a part of my hedge fund, okay, where we've gone and did the big data. So not just like, okay, looking at back tests, but like looking at hundreds of thousands of trades across multiple markets, across so many different traders. And we have shown that almost always the people that decide to trail are losing traders. Or if, or if they are making money, they're leaving sometimes between 50 to 70% of the profit that they could have made on the table because in most cases you're trailing. The trail that you have on there ends up going back to zero. So if you would have just taken the money at the time, you would have ended up making 50, sometimes 70% more than if you would have tried to trail to be able to have it go to the moon for whatever it is, $1,000 or $2,000 or whatever amount of money you think you're going to make when you're trailing. It almost always goes down to zero or at a loss. So when we're talking about your evaluation specifically, just take the profit of what it, whatever it is. So if it's $100, if it's $200, if it's $500, whatever it is, that's fine. 
but just do that. Don't try to trail it. Don't try to, you know, stair step your way to greatness. Just have a profit target in mind before you enter into a trade. Have a stop loss in mind before you enter into a trade and allow those numbers to just play out. You will make more money over the long run. The data proves it. I promise you. Okay. Another thing is do not hold trades overnight. A trader who holds trades over the weekend or overnight has a 60% higher chance of failing or losing their account. A lot of times because you sleep. So you don't, you don't really even know what's happening in the market. Um, and that's really important for you to know and for you to understand. Um, also, do not trade during times of high volatility. So I know the allure that you can make more money is important because it's moving so fast. And if you're right, you're going to make so much more of it. But you also get wrecked so much faster. Uh, I've traded during times of high volatility. Low vol I've, I've traded in every single market condition that you can think of, especially in the pandemic where things are just going crazy. And at the end of the day, it's just not worth it. I would much rather you stick with times when the market is a lot more predictable than when it isn't. During times of high volatility, it's almost never predictable. So you end up losing. I mean, imagine, okay, you get into a trade because you're like, oh man, I can make a whole bunch of money here. You're in your evaluation. You're about 500 bucks away or whatever the case is. And you decide to make a move where now the market has moved so fast that it skipped past your stop loss. And so now what? You've blown up that entire account and you actually can't get out of the trade because Ninja Trader or whoever you're using has hit that little error thing, right? Where now you can't even hit the close button and now you're just at the whim of whatever the market decides it wants to do and you end up losing your account. It happens all of the time and it's not necessary. Just do not trade during times of high, pro of high volatility. Your sanity and your accounts will thank you for it, okay? Because the longer the volatility exists, the amount of traders losing their account exceptionally increases. I'm sorry, exponentially increases. And this is so true. This is so true. Um, just don't do it. it. It isn't worth it at the beginning of the day, especially because I'm about to show you a better way. Okay, so you don't need to do these things anymore. I'm showing you the things not to do so you can, once you actually see the things to do, it just becomes so much simpler for you to understand why you should be doing it. All right, so let's jump into and we'll move right along here quickly with establishing a budget. OK, so assume the best, but plan for the worst, meaning that you want to set aside about three times your reset fee. OK, so if you're if the taking evaluation is like 100 bucks or whatever, set aside three hundred dollars, not to say you're going to need it. But just in case you do, OK, you have the money available to you. Don't just assume that you're going to pass this thing the first time because they are hard on purpose. Um, not even I pass all of these valuations the first time. Uh, Although I've gotten pretty good at it at this point, but even still, anything can happen. You know, your your computer could crash. Any anything can go can go wrong. So um, also make sure that you budget for the tools that you will need as well. So not just for the evaluations, but you know, you may need to trade copy to pass multiple evaluations at once. You may need different indicators, et cetera, et cetera. Right? There are other tools related to trading not just taking these evaluations. So you want to make sure you have the money for those and also take advantage of special discounts. I almost never, for me as a personal trader, meaning trading my own personal account, not with my hedge fund, but with my own personal account, I almost never pay retail for these evaluations because why would I? You know what I mean? And none of my coaching clients or the people that are part of Tradecology do they pay retail price ever. Why would you? I mean, there's always going to be a 50%, 80%, 20% discount that's going on at some time. Uh, you just got to be able to look out for them. So a great resource that you can use to find all the deals in relation to these funded trading accounts is CanadianFuturesTraders.ca. So I've had it here on the screen for you, um, but just utilizing this tool, I mean, I think it's even on the homepage, like every single day, if there's a new discount that's available, um, this website has it, so you'll see it. So you never, ever, ever have to pay retail for some of these evaluations again. So you can save as much as 50 to 80% in most cases on any given day for any of these accounts. Um, and you can be able to be able to comparison shop and find the best one. So if nothing else, that's a pretty great resource that you can use to figure out what's happening in the market. Okay. So now let's jump into establishing a formula. I'm looking I'm at about an hour. I apologize, folks. This may go closer to like an hour 15 an hour 20, uh, just because there's some more information that I want to include in here. Uh, but I will try to go through it as efficiently as possible without sacrificing the quality. All right, so let's talk about uh, the formula or what you can do in order to get really good at passing these evaluations. The number one thing that I always suggest when I'm working with new traders, right, in the coaching program is to pass your evaluation, your first evaluation at least, risking less than 10% per trade. Meaning that if you have, and when I say risk, I mean how much is your available drawdown? 
Okay, not how much do you need to make, but how much you can stand to lose before you lose the account. In most cases, if you're doing a fifty thousand dollar valuation, that's twenty five hundred dollars. So on any given trade, I'm saying never risk more than ten percent. So two hundred and fifty dollars per trade. If you find that you do that, you're going to put yourself in more trouble than you need to. It's easier to bounce back from a small loss than it is to bounce back from a big loss because and this has happened routinely across the board. There are just days when it's not your day as a trader. We all have them. Some have them more than they care to, which is why they're here. I get that part. But routinely what I find is usually most bad trading days are followed by a good trading day the day after. And so if you find that you're in a situation where you're in a bad trading day, but you don't have the discipline and the things in order to stop trading on the day on the days when it's a bad day, guess what happens? The next day you're going to have a better trading day and you're like, man, if I would have just stopped trading yesterday, like I would have been okay. Okay. <laughs> it happens all the time. But the but the thing that we have to work on is to identify when we're having a bad day soon enough to stop before it really turns into trouble. And there are a number of things that you can do to mitigate that. One of the biggest things that you can do, especially because all of these accounts use rhythmic, uh, all of these funded trading companies use rhythmic, is to set a personal loss limit, not the one that rhythmic gives you, but your own loss limit. So if I if I lose five hundred dollars on this day, no matter what, rhythmic is going to turn me off. So doing those sorts of things will help you to stay in the game so much longer. Uh, then if you don't have some of these things in place. Uh, so that's one that's really important. But the big thing is like to pass your first evaluation, make sure you can do a risk in less than 10% per trade. Then as you ha once you have your first one, use a trade copier to pass multiple evaluations after that. So it's never that you want to you know pass one at a time to get to 10, which is our suggested number that you have. You definitely want to, if you can pass the first one, now take five more the next time or three more the next time. Because the idea is we want to get you to the 10 accounts as fast as possible, because that's when the numbers really start to get very cool and very interesting. And that's what I'm going to show you next, how whether your number is 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 doesn't necessarily matter. OK, just going up net positive one trade a day, you can achieve all of these things once you understand how scaling really works with these accounts. So a uh, used trade copy to pass multiple evaluations at once. Next, go up one net positive trade per day until your evaluation is passed, meaning that if you're trading, and again, this goes to traders that don't really understand what it takes to pass these evaluations consistently. Sometimes it really is only one trade that you need to go up a day. It, you don't need to win three trades, five day, five trades. You don't need to pass these evaluations in one day. It almost never happens. Okay, there are some people who get lucky or put on too much risk or have a great day or whatever the case is, but nope. Don't do that. Okay, so Stefan, when I say risk 10%, I'm meaning risk 10% of your available drawdown limit. So if you're taking an evaluation and you have a, let's say a $2,500 available drawdown limit, meaning you can only lose $2,500 before you blow up the account, I'm saying on any individual trade, never have more than $250 in risk available, okay, or risk loss. So for every trade, you can trade multiple times. You can lose 10 times in a row. If you're doing 5%, you can lose 20 times in a row before you ever blow up that account. It's much easier to do that than it is the other way around, which most people put on way too much risk because they potentially think that they can make so much more money when they're adding so many different contracts. But it's cool for you to go up um, uh, one, go up net positive one trade per day until your evaluation is passed. And with funded accounts, don't scale your contracts, meaning let's say if you're taking this evaluation, your maximum number of contracts is two or your maximum number of contracts is three. Don't scale past that until your liquidity threshold has been reached. And what's a liquidity threshold? So once you pass these funded accounts and you once you pass these evaluations, you get a funded account. That's not it. Right. There is still a, they still give you another drawdown that you have to get past before they allow you to essentially, um, you know, just, I guess, trade to your heart's content. And in most cases, it's that same drawdown limit that it was before. So if you pass a $50,000 evaluation, your liquidity threshold is still $2,500. So I'm saying don't trade more than what you would normally trade during the evaluation until you hit $2,500 in profit and that liquidity threshold is turned off. Because once it's turned off, then that gives us a little bit more room to be able to scale and not worry about our account being at risk. But if you ever get yourself to the point where like you're putting on more contracts and you're risking your account, you're just... You just, you just, again, you're, you're compounding the possibility that 
this time that you've taken, the weeks or the months that you've taken to get to this point are all going to be for nothing because you're going to blow the account anyway. Again, we're talking seven one thousandths of one percent ever get to their first payout. And I routinely work with traders that get to their first payout all the time. OK, so I'm trying to tell you the things that you can do to become it, you know, to be in that small percentage of people that actually do this on a routine basis. Not again, not every trader does this. Not every trader follows the rules. Not every trader, whatever the case is, right? So I'm not saying we have a 100% win rate of everybody that does the right things, but we definitely have a much higher than industry average because we know the right things to do. And we work with you on the psychology side so that you understand that it's the psychology piece of it that really makes the biggest difference, okay? Um, all right, so... Now, when we talk about establishing a formula, I actually want to give you a direct example of how you can pass one of these. But for me to do that, I just want to ask quickly, do you want me to show you the easy way to do it or the hard way to do it? Because I'll show you either way, but just which one would you prefer? Would you rather me do it, show you the easy way to make this simpler, or show you the hard way, which is a lot easier to fail? Just taking a quick second here to look at the chat. Hard, easy, easy, easy. <laughs> show both fun okay um all right so we'll start here with the i mean it is the mix which is which is actually quite interesting right okay so i'll start i'll start with the easy way and then i'll give a slight example of the harder way to do it okay so um again this this i'll show you the easy way first so this this workshop is pegged as you know get a million dollars in funded trading accounts which is a sexy title i get that part it gets people to show up but i promise you 50, I mean, a million dollars isn't even necessarily required for you to make ten thousand, twenty thousand, or fifty thousand dollars a month. It's because it's more important for you to understand that they're really about the drawdown limits. So here, notice if we're looking here at these two different accounts. So this is Lilu. This is the example that I'm giving the company Lilu. Okay, so they have a fifty thousand dollar account and a one hundred thousand dollar account. The fifty thousand dollar account, you have to make three thousand before you lose twenty five hundred. And you get eight contracts or eight minis or possibly 80 micros to do that. Now, if you go the a hundred thousand dollar account, right? You have you have access to 12 contracts. So you have more contracts that you can trade with, but you also have to make double the amount of money. So you have to make six thousand dollars without losing three of it. But notice Lilu didn't go, okay, well, we're gonna double how much money you can lose either. They just moved it up 500 bucks. So you're paying more money. To, to essentially make double the money, right? Without the ability to be able to lose double the amount. You can only lose $500 more. It's a much more difficult way to be able to pass a lot of these evaluations. And again, they have their Lilo Express, which is harder still, right? Which you have to do this in 14 calendar dates. Now, when I was originally teaching this method, I would show people how to pass this Lilo Express account, which meant how to get a $100,000 account in 14 days. Now, though we had plenty of traders that were doing it, okay, it was the harder way to do it, to pass an $100,000 account in 14 days or to get $6,000 without losing three. A much simpler way to do it is simply to pass this $50,000 launch, okay, to make $3,000 without losing 2,500 of it. It's cheaper. The amount of money that you have to make is almost, it, no, it is exactly half, okay? And you only have $500 less in drawdown. And when we're talking $500 less in drawdown, um, that's not, I mean, that's not significant of a difference, especially enough to be able to pay more money as well as do the different things that you, that you want to do. So let me show you, even if we're using just a $50,000 account, okay. So not going to the full million, but even at just half a million dollars, okay. You can make half a million dollars, meaning you have 10, $50,000 accounts. Okay. How you can achieve every single one of your income goals, right? This is probably going to be the coolest part about this, but this does require a little bit of math. I do apologize, but we're also traders. So math is involved in what we do. I promise I won't lose you. It's relatively simple, but it does take half a second for me to explain this. Okay. So what I'm showing you here, and I'll, and I'll show you the full spreadsheet later, meaning in the next slide, um, but what I'm showing you here, are the number of columns. So this tick column is how many ticks you need to win per trade. OK, the tick amount is what amount you make per tick. Contracts, obviously, is how many contracts you're trading. Fees, I just kept a round number of $5. It's usually less than five, but $5 just for this uh, purpose. The net PL is how much money you make 
minus the fees if you want to trade your profit target is again this fifty thousand dollars here so fifty thousand your three thousand dollar profit target so that's that three thousand dollars and this is net positive trade and net positive ticks so what this is saying is how many trades do you have to win in order to be able to pass this evaluation of three thousand dollars to get your fifty thousand dollar funded account so what i'm showing you here are the different tiers remember how we went in that instrument tier list and we said tier one was the precious metals and the bonds tier two was ES and some of the other um, instruments like gold, crude oil, those sorts of things. And then tier three are the equities and some of the currencies. OK, so again, we want to focus on tier one instruments almost exclusively. In this example, I'm using a tick amount of twenty five hundred twenty five dollars, which is actually silver futures. So SI. So with silver futures is twenty five dollars per tick, even just trading two contracts. OK, that's going to put you at about two hundred and forty dollars which is 10% of your available drawdown on any given trade. Because again, your max drawdown, if we're looking here, right, is 2,500 is your trailing drawdown. So here we're saying $240 is 10% of that. So if you're risking about 10%, it's like 8 9% uh, per trade, you need to beat up, this is net positive 12 and a half trades in order to pass this evaluation. Now there's 20 trading days in a month. You need to be up, let's just call it one, but it's, it's like a little less than half. So you need to be up one trade every two days in order to be able to pass this evaluation. So you don't need to even win every day. You just need to be trading two contracts, which is risking 10% of the amount. You need to be up 12 and a half trades, okay, in order to be able to pass this evaluation or 63 ticks total. That's a much easier way to do this process than probably even doing some of the other ways. So for example, let's say you're a fan of the ES, okay? In order to do the same thing in ES, instead of you being up, um, so it's still 12 and a half trades, okay? But notice, even at trading two contracts, you have to have the market move twice as much. So with silver, you only need to be up five ticks, which is fairly simple to do. Um, I would say silver moves closer to an ES kind of, or maybe a UB. It doesn't move as slow as ZB, definitely, but it has the volatility there on most days. Three out of five days, there's really enough movement for you to be able to get five ticks, no problem with A plus setups. Not just hoping that something's going to happen, but actually getting it to work. Oh, hey, Simone. I see Simone, which is one of our students uh, from the last cohort. I love Simone. She's great. Um, so, even at 1250, if you're doing, let's say, ES, you have to have the market move twice as much, okay? So you need to get 125 ticks total to be able to pass the same evaluation as you would if you were just doing silver or bonds, which would be less in general. But if you want to go all the way down to the equities, right, which is $5 per tick, not only do you need to double that number still, so you need to get 20 ticks per winning trade, okay? You need to win more trades. So you need to be up almost 16 trades and you need a total of 316 ticks. It's much harder to get 316 winning ticks than it is to get 63, I assure you, okay? So for me, I'm looking at what is the simplest way for you to be able to get to the exact number that you need to get to, to be able to pass these evaluations and get this money then to just try to, again, fit a square peg in a round hole saying, well, I only trade ES or I only trade NQ. So therefore you have to show me how this works with ES and NQ. I can show you, but I'm telling you, it'll be a much harder thing to do than to simply just go with what's already working, right? To be able to make some adjustments to your game, which is pretty much half working anyway, or you wouldn't be here. Like, I'm not saying you're a bad trader, but every trader goes through issues. Every trader struggles with things. And I'm trying to show you that there are easier ways for you to be able to do these things, especially to pass the evaluation. Now, once you have a funded account and you think that you know what you're doing, do whatever you want, right? I'm not, I'm not trying to say this is the only way to get to where you need to go. But I am trying to show you a simple path in this exact presentation because I don't want to leave anything out and I want to show you exactly how you can get there quickly and efficiently as possible. OK, so this is me showing you the formula in terms of you need to go up 12 and a half trades at two contracts. Right. If you're trading silver or enter the bonds or whatever else in there. Right. To be able to make this. Now, once you have a trade copy and you can do this multiple times and pass multiple evaluations at once, this is where it really starts to get fun and interesting. OK, so when we talk about really getting fun and interesting, I'll jump into this actual slide here and now I'll show you. So this is a PL calculator. So let me just make this a little larger. This is the original one that you had actually no, This is the original one that you had seen from the actual slide itself, which is showing you those numbers. But now we're going to get you to the point where you have 10 of these accounts, ladies and gentlemen, not just the one right to pass the evaluation, but you have 10 of these. So uh, let's say in this example, we have five hundred thousand dollars. 
in account. So the, the extra tab that you see here that I added is this one, which is accounts to say that you now have 10 of them, but you still have the same five ticks, the same 10 ticks or the same 20 ticks. But for me, I said specifically, what if we want to make $25,000 a month? Now notice, even with the same, right? Everything being the same, we're making five ticks at $25 per tick. We're trading two contracts. We're trading 10% of our available drawdown with the fees, okay? What we're saying now is in order to make $25,000 a month, because we multiplied this across 10 accounts, we only need to be net positive 10 trades. So if there's 20 trading days a month, um, that means that you only need to win one trade every two trading days, okay? And that's $25,000 a month that you can have to go up net positive one trade every two trading days. It's possible to do, especially when you're focusing on your A plus setups, especially when you get your discipline in order, especially when you get your psychology in order. Like once you start to remedy some of these mistakes that keep you from doing the dumb things that you would normally do as a trader, this becomes extremely probable and possible. If I took that number down to 10,000, it'd be even easier still. Actually, that's 100, sorry. That'd be even easier still. So even at trading two contracts, okay, ladies and gentlemen, where we're only risking, again, $250 and some change, you need to be net positive four trades a month in order to make $10,000. $10,000 is most people's like goal. Like 80% of traders that I talk to, they say, if I can get $10,000 a month, that'd be great. If we're talking 25,000, you can do the same thing. Um, yes, so for those that are interested in this spreadsheet, I've actually included it in the description already before you start it. Uh, and so if you look in the description down at the bottom, there's a link to the spreadsheet. I would say possibly even go look at it on your own time, simply because I still got a couple of more things that I want to explain and that I want you to tune out. But you can definitely go and make a copy of this, put it in your own Google Drive, play with it, manipulate the numbers all you want to. I created this spreadsheet myself. Feel free to use it and to do as much with it as you need. I'll even include this PL calculator in here so that you can actually go and play with the numbers and see for yourself, okay, how easy it is to make 10, 20, 30, 50 thousand dollars and you don't need to go up a whole bunch of trades. So all of these things are very, very possible to do. You just need to understand what you need to do in order to make this a reality, okay? So all this is here. So we're talking trade in silver, five ticks per trade, only risking 10% of your available drawdown to get to $25,000 a month. You need to win one trade, go up one trade every two days. This is very, very possible to do. It's not something that requires you to win 10 trades a day or take a whole bunch of risk or risk a whole bunch of contracts. None of that stuff is necessary, okay? Once you actually get the math and the discipline down. So let's jump into now, okay, some different client results. So again, I've, I've run short on time, so I can't go through all of them, although I did invite a couple of people. So what I'll just do is play this one interview from uh, Shamika. And for those that are around, you possibly know Shamika for sure. But for those that haven't introduced been introduced to her before, I just want to play this quickly so that you all can hear her story of what she was able to do. Hey, Marcus. Shamika. Hey, love. How are you hey. doing? You, look, I'm like, good, and I'm waving like you can see me. You can't. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't turn on videos because uh, Simone, you know, said that, you know, she was shy and didn't necessarily feel comfortable. So I'm cool with doing the audio, um, but I appreciate you being here so much. I know that you have to go. You got to take your kids to the dentist. But I, I felt like this was too important for us not to share this with the community. You know what I mean? So like um, I, just to give you some just to give you some reference for folks that are listening. So Shamika is in at the top level. So she's all the way in our coaching program. She's in our 12 week program where we work with traders specifically on what their specific trading issues are, helping them to put that plan together for them to fix it. Um, you know, we do weekly coaching calls. We do group sessions together. We do all of those things. Like she gets my full attention and things like that in order for her to fix her trading. And she actually just got out of a trade today. Shamika, tell us what happened today. Yeah. I'm all smiles. <laughs> um, today I just got out of a 36 hour trade. And so I had to put it on over the weekend, of course. And at noon, well, it was actually 11 a.m. At 11 a.m. I got out of the trade and I was profitable and I'm all smiles still. Um, I, do you want me to tell you about the trade or just that, that was it? I want, now I want you to tell me about the trade. And again, I'm not using your last name on purpose for privacy, privacy concerns, but like, tell us what happened. Um, 
Okay, it was the largest trade I had put on to date for four hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and I made an eighty-seven percent return. So it was three hundred and forty-eight thousand. How much again? In the bank, three hundred and forty-eight thousand. Say that one more time. That's a measly three hundred and forty-eight thousand. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> To grow your account That's past it. one million bucks, okay? Ten weeks. I I did. Ten and weeks. And what's so funny is it took me exactly thirty days, which is funny. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, it's funny because I opened the account on February, not February, uh, April. No, what? March eleventh, twenty twenty. I'm trying to think of what day we are. Okay, March eleventh, twenty twenty two, and today mm-hmm. is April eleventh. 2022 and I crossed 1.3 million. So 1. I feel good because I 1.3 million. I feel good because Marcus to tell you our first couple of sessions, we didn't even talk about my trading because <laughs> that wasn't my issue. My issue was all the emotional parts because I had learned how to trade um the top of February 2021. But during that time, my husband had passed away on the day I blew up my account and just the grief and all the emotions being all over the place. I had fear of trading and just, just not being able to control my emotions when I sat down to the trade to actually my trading computer. So for Marcus, what about five, six, eight weeks, all we did was talk about my issues and go to the classes and like fix stuff. But I finally started trading again, but I was trading on the ES. Um, Cause that's why I had started. It was on a future DS. And from there it was like, I make wins, I lose money, make wins, lose money. But then it started getting consistent. So I was able to get like 18 ticks on the ES at five contracts. So I was like, Oh, 1800. Yeah. I feel good about $1,800, you know, mm-hmm. but then it, it was like, okay. Um, a different type of uh, trading mentor came into my world and it was like, okay, we got to move you away from Russian roulette, which is my trading style for the ES, because yep. it was not a whole system. It was just Russian roulette. And so I tr- moved over to crypto. And it became about discipline of only getting in, like Marcus say, when you get an A1 setup. It became about not moving them stop losses, because at least this way, I didn't even, I, it felt like I no longer even had the option to get out of the trade once you put the trade on, because you got to wait till the time expire, which helped with that I'm nervous syndrome, because it forced you to get up, go walk away and move on. But you have to study your charts, study your instrument, and only take your best setups, because once you do that, you build up the confidence, because in this one month period, I only put on 16 trades, all wins. So it's like the discipline, but without the psychology part and the emotional part and all the clearing work, Mm -hmm. that's where you actually get your return and your money back from is the systems is great because you can push the buttons, you can read the charts. And I will say this, you need to have good data. When Marcus is telling, talking about, okay, your tools matter and where you're going for, for information, that part is huge because you are out there in the world with bigger company who have different data. And so you have to find your edge in whatever data you use, and you have to be very disciplined in strengthening your, um, I almost want to call it market assessment. Mm-hmm. So you're not just getting in anywhere. And and that part really did help. Yeah. One of the things that to me, I appreciate it about you so much is there are so many times where I run into traders that ask for my help that are looking to, you know, get consistently profitable to pass these combines to even get to the level of, let's say a hundred million dollars, I mean, a million dollars in funded accounts. And I talk to them so much about, it's not just, it's not just about where you enter and you exit. It's not just about these setups. It's, it's really about your psychology. It's about your relationship with money. <clears throat> it's about where your mindset is and us doing the work to really shift that so that the money naturally shows up. And so many times I get people that are like, that, <clears throat> that mindset stuff is cool, but tell me about these setups though. You know what I mean? Like they're really just kind of focusing on that part. And what I really appreciate about you is that you, you actually did the work to, 
create the shifts within yourself so that the abundance ultimately showed up. Again, the first couple of weeks that we were talking together, we didn't even talk about trading, okay? We talked about the grief around the loss of your husband, you know what I mean? And like how that yeah. was keeping you from the abundance that was around you already, that you just weren't ultimately being able to take advantage of because that grief was there. And so we, I mean, some deep work in order to get that part healed so that then the money started showing up. And then when I started talking to you about strategy and setups and things like that, you were actually able to listen to me because we had all, we had already done the healing work necessary to get that done. So I know you got to go. I know you got to take your kids to, uh, to the dentist, but I just got one final question for you for the folks that are listening and you're getting a lot of congratulations. You go girls, my power sister, everything in the chat. So I want you to know that the chat's going crazy for you. There's a lot of love coming your direction. So what would you say to someone that is on this webinar may see this webinar at this workshop after it's been recorded or whatever, and they are on the fence about like whether they should focus on this mental stuff, whether they should work with us, whether they should take the chance to reach out and like, let's say even have a free one-on-one -on -one call with us. What would you tell them? Do it, <laughs> set it up and do it. And I know that sounds so simple. One, fear can never take you where you want to go. It just won't. It'll keep you in the same box, in the same predicament, situation, circumstances. And I know it seems, I say that very easily, like, oh, just conquer your fear. You're going to have to do it anyway because you have plans on living. You want to live abundantly. You want to have a skill and a legacy to pass on to your kids. You don't want your legacy to be fear-based. So to sit down with Marcus and his team and to have these sessions to where you can actually have somebody pinpoint a strategy misstep or as well as, uh, okay, tighten up this part. That is invaluable all up in itself because how many times do we really get to sit down with somebody who can manage and make the type of money, you know, markets make? And because if you use, you know, well, I'm about to get all metaphysics on you, but, the, you know, the law of association, you that vibration is going to pass on to you. So you have to come and rise up to the level just because you're in close proximity. The psychology part and the energy part behind it that part determines your whole life um, because we all know emotions is energy in motion and our feelings have a way of pushing us in a direction to do something, to take some type of action, whether it's fear or whether it's coming from love and abundance. We're going to move in those ways. That's why we still get married because we were moved by the emotion of love. But fear can also make us, you know, stay inside. So your life won't change and your finances won't change until you change on the inside. And that's the biggest lesson that I learned because I had to do it because if I wouldn't have, how was I going to trust Marcus and the the information and the resources and the all the things he was coming with if I couldn't get beyond my own fear and really lean in to what Marcus was telling me and trust him because I had put him in a position of, I almost want to say a, a, a mentor, but a mentor is in a position of authority in your life and you are coming to them like Bruce Lee came to his master like an empty cup so that you can absorb the things that they've mastered. And you can't do that from a place of I know it all or a place of where you're reluctant to listen. So you got to have ears to hear what your mentor and the people who's ahead of you is saying. And once you do that, it's much easier to then go back and change on your identity level because you have to see yourself as an abundant trader, as a trader who makes an abundance of money and that you're worthy of this money and you deserve this money. Like that's at the core part. If you don't feel you deserve this lifestyle because trading is a lifestyle, because let me tell you, your girl get interest every day on her money. Your girl get $2,500 every day on her money. So I can live off of interest now if I don't never more trade again. That's different. Like it took 30 days to get to that freedom mark, that breakthrough mark. Thank you so much, uh, Shamika. Okay, so we have, and this has ran a little long, so let me just, I'll go through these last little couple of slides uh, in the last two minutes or so that I have. Um, but what I really want to do here is just talk talk to the people that, you know, are, are seeing the value in what's going on. Again, everything that I've given you here, everything that I've shown you, I've given you access to the spreadsheet. You will have access to this video. All of this information is available to you. You can go out on your own right now and do the things that you need to do in order to get a, a million dollars in funded accounts. OK, I made this presentation to be specifically that way. But what I want to do now 
is to talk to those people that may be interested in uh, possibly having someone who can help them to get to the point where they need to get to. Because sometimes you can't just completely do it on your own. Sometimes you do need to help or push or get access to resources that you may not have access to. So I just want to take this time to talk about uh, kind of what we do here at Tracology and what's a little different and what are the values between possibly doing it yourself and doing it with the team with like with folks like us who focus specifically on the psychology and the success of being able to be consistently profitable as a trader. So the first thing that I want to say is the difference between working with yourself and working with Tracology is we actually have a $1 million funded account guarantee. Okay. So what does that mean? That means that we will work with you. Okay. Until you get a million dollars in funded accounts past, you know, whatever the formal time is. So I think our coaching program is like 12 weeks past that time. Um, if you don't do it in 12 weeks, we will continue to work with you for free, okay, until you actually get to the goal. For us, it's not about the time. It's not about, oh, we just want you in this coaching program because we're trying to fill these spots up or whatever the case is. We actually invest ourselves in you to get you to where you need to go. We pour a lot into this, and sometimes it takes a little longer. Not everybody is just on this cookie-cutter timeline sort of, sort of thing. So we love um, to work with people specifically to help them to get to where they need to go. Okay. We also have a first payout guarantee, which means we're going to work with you until you actually get paid. So it's not just getting the accounts, but actually getting the money. So you're going to work with a team of professionals who have done this already, right? We've already crossed the finish line. Not only have we done it for ourselves, but we've helped other people do it too. Um, and we have a number of great tools that will help you to be able to do so. Uh, we will work with you specifically to fix your trading issues, whether that's over trading, analysis paralysis, not knowing what your setups are, um, or enter any sort of psychological or um, systems-based problem that you have. Uh, we will work with you want to identify them and then give you the tools and the things that you need to do to be able to get past them. It's sometimes hard to do that on your own because you may not even necessarily know what your issue is. You may think it's over trading, but it actually may be something else. You know, I see that happen so often. Um, so we'll help you to establish discipline to stick to your take profit and your stop loss goals. Um, and we'll establish discipline to help you to stick to your A plus setups or if you don't know what your A plus setups are, we will help you to establish A plus setups, right? Because now we have the tools to be able to do so. And I'm really excited about that because in this new program, we actually, um, actually let's talk about, I'll go into that part next, but let's go into this part. So um, um, what you get is like our a million dollar funded account training. And what's included in that is a million dollars in uh, funded accounts blueprint, our psychology of profitable trading framework, our consistent profitability framework, our double your trading profits framework, our optimizing your uh, trading edge system, our stop over trading system, which is probably one of our most popular courses or systems that we have because so many traders struggle with over trading. And it's not that in your brain, you don't know that you're supposed to stop. But what most times you don't understand is that emotionally something has triggered that is overriding anything that your brain is telling you. So unless you have the tools and understand how to stop the emotions, you will never stop over trading. And so we give you that, right? So we stop you over trading and stop the emotional trading for good. Okay, but then also what we include in this program is great because now we get the offer and we didn't necessarily have it before, but now it's included in our program. So we have a new fully functioning and profitable auto trader, like an actual auto trading system that works out of the box. And it's not even one that we develop ourselves. It's from a great company called Rightline. Uh, the guy, Mark there, he is a um, certified mathematician, right? This is what they do for a living. Uh, they trade for themselves and others. Uh, it's a it's a quantitative automated trading model designed to provide the trader with optimized entry signals, right? So this can be con configured for any asset class, any market, any instrument, any time frame, uh, and it's done with a proprietary forward-looking algorithm. So most indicators that you get, right? Every single indicator is looking at the same information, open, high, low, close, time and sales. Okay. All of those are lagging indicators, meaning that they're looking at what's happened in the past to try to predict what's going on in the future. But instead, this one's more of a forward looking algorithm, meaning that it's looking on multiple time frames and it's making predictions at the quantum second of what's going to be happening next in the market and displaying that information to you. It's one of the only systems that I know of that is available to the retail trader. Now, as a hedge fund, I have access to other stuff, but believe me, that's so much more expensive. Like the, the average retail trader would never be able to afford the hundreds of thousands of dollars or whatever it is to get access to those sorts of systems. But Rightline has pretty much given you what some of these hedge funds have um, at a much cheaper price than that. And the coolest part is in, it's included in our program. So I think with Rightline, you got to pay something like $4,000 a year 
in order to get access to that. Um, and you, I don't even think our program is $4,000 total. So you, you understand, like you're getting all of that in conjunction with having your own auto trader that works out of the box. Like you don't have to do anything. It definitely does work for you. So included with the folks at right line, what they're also going to give you is one month of live, the live trading room, weekly educational training sessions. They give you a video tutorial library, uh, unlimited VIPs trading support. And I mean that you can call them during their business hours. Uh, and there's like two guys and they pick up the phones. Um, and they're, and they're pretty awesome. I will answer that for you, Lee, once we get to the, actually I'll answer it now because I think I won't have time for Q and A. Uh, I love Bookmap. I use Bookmap uh, almost every day. It's one of the greatest ways that you can look at uh, order flow data. It's not always the easiest to trade on. So you use some other tools, but what Brightline has done is taking what Bookmap has done and put it inside an industry trader on top of a bunch of other things. So, you know, Bookmap can give you all those sorts of things, but with this, you can do your own, um, like there's so many different setups and you can use their uh, strategy system inside an industry trader as well. So you can have your own custom strategy. Uh, the guys even go in. All right, great to see you, Lee, see you around. Um, they also go in, like set up the thing on your computer for you. So it's not even something that you have to work to set up with on your own. It's actually really cool. And as a bonus, uh, we haven't conducted our own, it's like two hours, maybe a little bit longer masterclass that we have developed and the templates included. So their auto trader is almost only exclusively, they do it, they optimize it for ES, but we've done it for ES, NQ, RTY, uh, ZB, UB, like so many different other instruments. So you won't have to go in and just reinvent the wheel. We've actually done a, a lot of the work for you in order to create the templates and giving you a full masterclass in terms of how to understand this auto trader that you have. It's not necessarily that it doesn't work unless you use the masterclass because it works on its own, but coupling the masterclass with what we've done uh, just puts you so much further ahead. So you get access to a trading system as well as the training and how to be able to do so. You also get a dedicated training coach, which means for the most part, I think it's still going to be me, although we have added a couple of people, um, where you get five one-on-one -on -one coaching calls with me. You get trading psychology and a systems audit, meaning that I work with you for an hour, hour and a half, and we're just on Zoom, jamming it out, seeing like what are the things you're struggling with, both on the psychology and the issue side and putting a roadmap together to get you to where you need to go so that you can actually fix the problem, solve the problems that you have. And we diagnose and fix specific trading issues. Not, you know, I don't know who you are, so I can only give Blake and advice kind of like I'm doing here. I'm trying to give enough information for everyone. Those calls are just, it's me and you. So we're going to figure out what's going on with you and we're going to fix it specifically. I promise you, I guarantee it that we're going to be able to fix it because I'm going to continue to work with you until I do. Like I'm more dedicated to fixing the problem than sometimes other traders are. Like you'll quit before I quit on you. I promise you, you can ask anybody who works with me. Um, and then you also have uh, an accountable, you have someone who can help you be accountable and, you know, systemically or systematically measure your progress because what you don't measure doesn't get tracked. So we're going to measure all this other stuff. You also get small group workshops every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for 12 weeks. On uh, Monday, we talk about trading uh, psychology. On Wednesday, we talk about optimizing your trading system. And then on Fridays, we do energy clearings with our Dr. Sandra. Anybody who has been a part of the 30-day challenge or have done any of our other stuff before knows who Dr. Sandra is. She's great. She is a um, licensed psychologist, a PhD. She does this at a very high level for the military, uh, for Raytheon, which is a military contractor. Um, definitely does it at a great level is really uh, expensive, but because we do it in a group setting, I've been able to have her be able to offer what she does to, for at least for me at a steep discount, which I'm able to include it in this program for everyone else. So uh, for those who have done these sessions, it, Dr. Sandra is a favorite. And so she's going to be back in this next cohort, which is really cool. And I actually get to talk to her on Friday, which is great because I haven't talked to her in a while. I kind of miss her. All right. So what's also included, you get lifetime access to the following. So online trainings, system updates, uh, our inner circle group, you get lifetime access to our private discord channel where there are other traders that um, are working on a consistent basis to optimize their trading and their trading system we can offer you advice and tools and insights and different things like that. You get access to our full library of behavior change protocols and lifetime access to the right line auto trading system with the updates. And this one is really important because you get lifetime access to updates as opposed to yearly access if you just go through their website. So you get all of this included in our program for life without paying anything extra, which I think is actually really cool and really fun. 
uh, and you get our full uh, satisfaction guarantee, meaning if you haven't secured $1 million in funded trading accounts and made it to your first payout at the end of the formal program, we will continue to work with you free of charge until that goal is hit. Again, for us, it's about the goal. It's not just about the time. So we want you to hit the goal because we know that that's the thing that makes the biggest difference. And we know that we can help you get there because it's a lot simpler to do than most people try to complicate it and make it be so that they can sell this expensive program, right? So we've done this for thousands of traders at this point. We've had hundreds of traders go through our coaching program at this point as well. Many of them have become successful at what it is that they're doing. I am confident that we ultimately help you to be able to do the same thing if you're looking for that sort of help. Again, you can do all this stuff because I put it in this presentation. You can go and do it on your own. But if you did need a little help, an accountability partner, and a little push, um, we are definitely here to ultimately be able to help you. Um, so here's how you can get started. You can just go to the link below, which is tradecology.com co forward slash fund it also if you look in the description of this video it will be there as well so right underneath the video it should be right there they used to have it like right at the top i think now it's like next to the the streaming information but it's there if you want to just click it in that space uh, and once you go to that link um, just fill out a brief questionnaire uh, and then you have a time to meet with me one on one, where we'll just sit and jam and we'll talk and we'll figure out what your goals are and if you're a good fit for the program. Uh, and then you also get a discount on enrollment. Now, I, I won't say in a live form, meaning on this video, how much it is simply because the price can change and different things like that. And people can view this later and the price may be different. But what I will say is I'm not hiding it. So once you go to that questionnaire, the, the, the enrollment cost will be there. So, you know, I'm not I'm trying to be as transparent as I can as possible, but I'm also not trying to date this video or be stuck to a price that isn't the price anymore because I, I have to honor it because I've said it, you know, with my words and this sort of thing. So um, it is there for sure. And you can definitely be able to look at it. Um, and so with that said, we actually have run a little long so if I do see a question or whatever in, in the chat, I will happily answer it. But if not, I think because this has gone longer than I expected it to, almost 30 minutes longer, uh, I think I'm just going to end it here. Um, I thank everyone for being here for sure. Uh, this was a great session. I hope you definitely got some value out of it and that you can use the information at here to start getting your own funded accounts, whether it's one, whether it's two, whether it's five, whether it's 10. Uh, we have a lot of great free information on our website, tradecology.co, in terms of, uh, you know, um, what is it, a assessment that you can fill out to figure out what you're dealing with as a trader and how you can begin to um, resolve them. Our five-day challenge that we use with a lot of traders, we've had thousands of traders go through that, is like five or $10, right? It's relatively inexpensive. so. Um, it's something that can help you a lot to get into the peak performance state. Uh, we do a lot here to help traders just to get over the things that are keeping them from getting to that next step because we've been there before and we understand how frustrating it is. So we want to be able to provide the tools for you to be able to do so as well. Um, so thank you all so much. If there are questions, feel free to reach out to me via email to support at tradecology.co. Um, I mainly promoted this via email, so everybody pretty much has my email address. Um, or just leave a question in the comments here and I'll be able to answer those as well. But other than that, I bid you all a great rest of the day. Thank you all so much. And I will talk to you soon.